Hey guys, welcome back to Punk Capacitor Automotive and Audio. Today, there's something that I kept seeing that kept catching my eye in the Walmart audio, well, car audio section. And that is this little box right here. This is the Power Acoustic 8-inch Amplified Subwoofer. And at $120, is it really worth it? That's what I was asking myself. Let's check it out. So for first impressions, it's very small, even smaller than I thought it would be, but it feels very substantial. It's made entirely of aluminum and it's pretty solid, but the LED lighted grill is absolutely atrocious. We'll get to that in a minute. Looking at the controls and connections, which are conveniently all located on one side, there's a power and protect LED, a zero to 180 degrees phase shift and color mode switch, controls for low pass, bass boost and input level, a jack for the bass knob, high and low level inputs, a 25 amp fuse, which really makes us skeptical of the 600 watt rating, and screw style power, ground, and remote terminals, which are actually just a number two Phillips, so you won't have to worry about finding the right Allen key. They appear to be eight gauge compatible. Included in the box are a manual, a base knob, which is a definite bonus, although it's kind of plasticky, a high level input harness, as well as mounting hardware. All right, so for the sound test, I decided for two separate reasons that I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up into my 2006 Chevy Colorado. One being because the connections are very easy to get to. Second reason is I'm gonna compare this little sub to my existing system, which consists of an Alpine MRP M200 amplifier. And then I just have two power acoustic 12 inch subs in a ported box. I kind of want to see how they compare to this little eight inch. So here's the before, this is my existing system. For anyone wondering, it's just a Pioneer head unit, uh, kicker K5s in the door, and then kickers in the uh, in both doors, front and back doors. Yeah, this is statement from Nethix. So this is how it sounds normally. <laughs> Okay, so we're hooked up in the car, and I noticed something kind of right off the bat. Right now it is off. Well, let me go ahead and turn the car on. All right, so power is on. Don't know if you can hear that, but that LED is actually indicating something. That is that it's hearing some noise. Now, I do have my RCA kind of close to the uh, power and ground, but it shouldn't be that bad. I had it pretty close just like this on my Alpine, and you couldn't hear anything through the Alpine. But look at what happens when I start the engine. I'll give it a second. That's a lot of alternator. Now that can usually be chalked up to your RCAs being way too close to your power leads. But um, that's very excessive. And I, like I said, I didn't hear that on the Alpine. All right, so now with the car off, let's actually listen to how it sounds. And this is all at the same exact volume and settings as the Alpine was on. All right, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but... um. I had to stop it because I don't want to wake up my neighbors. My neighbor works uh, like midnights and I feel really bad and I'm very, very surprised. But that little thing sounds very, very good. It makes me very happy to know that we as a human race have actually got to a point to where we can stuff an eight inch subwoofer inside of what would normally be a regular car audio amplifier. And it sounds like that. Wow. All right, so honestly, that far exceeded my expectations. I actually took more footage, which actually turned out to be about a three second time lapse. And in that footage, what I did was I actually turned it up pretty loud. And I gotta say, 
It's definitely more than I thought that it would be, but it does kind of bottom out. Uh, it doesn't really bottom out, but it can't really take the low frequencies too well. I don't really know if it's 600 watts. Honestly, I really don't think that it is 600 watts, but there's really no definitive way for me to tell how much watts it actually puts out. Big D, if you're watching, please amp dyno this thing. So in conclusion, I would really suggest this for somebody who wants to get some bass but doesn't have a lot of space. I didn't mean to do that, I'm sorry. This thing will literally fit under probably most seats, even if you put it in a trunk. I mean, it wouldn't take up too much space and it has enough power to where that would be sufficient. Also, if you've actually clicked on this video hoping to actually see me install this device, I didn't do it because I wanted this to be more of a review and a test. But if you were trying to figure out how to wire a similar sub to that, go ahead and click on the link right up there, which is actually me installing a dual 10 inch speaker, which is pretty rough close to this and I have to be honest between the two I think the power acoustic has more highs and I think it generally gets a little bit louder but it can't really do the low frequencies as well honestly I'd say they're pretty comparable but the power acoustic 8 inch might edge it out just because of the small footprint and the fact that you could put it anywhere and actually get like that much amount of sound. It's ridiculous. The only thing I can't really speak on yet is longevity of the product, but that'll come. In the meantime, I hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and put them down in the comments. But yeah, bottom line, uh, I'm impressed. So. Like always, thank you guys so much for watching. The channel's actually starting to grow and it's really fun, you know, interacting. Like I said, have any questions, put them down there. Thanks guys, <laughs> bye.